A-level chemistry. Even saying that now still makes me shudder. Throughout my academic life, there have been so many subjects that I have hated. I am someone who absolutely adores learning and I have still had so many subjects that I have had to struggle my way through even just to finish. Maybe it's the teacher. Maybe the subject is too hard. Maybe I'm not putting in enough effort. Maybe I don't know how to revise it. For whatever reason, there are always subjects that we're not gonna like and we still have to get through them. Today, we're getting realistic. How can you smash the subjects that you hate. You chose to take it, maybe you didn't even choose to take it, but you're gonna smash it regardless. And the fact that you clicked on this video is so much hope to me because it shows that you are motivated to change something. Number one, identify your problem areas. How can you know what to change if you don't even really know which subjects you don't like, which topics you don't like? There's a wonderful quote by Peter Drucker which says, you can't improve what you don't measure. So start measuring how you feel about all the topics that you're currently studying. I recommend making a long spreadsheet or a long list of all the topics that you're currently studying and ranking them. You can use a simple traffic light system and go through and highlight it in red, amber or green based on how you feel about it. If your test scores generally haven't been that good, then maybe it's a red, it's a clear red, you've got to go over it, you know you don't really enjoy it. If it's an amber, maybe you sometimes like it, but you're a little bit worried, could use a bit of improvement. But if you're enjoying the subject, you're on top of it, then mark it with a green because that is not something that you need to be focusing more on. Step number two, make a new column on your spreadsheet. Any topic that you have highlighted as red or amber Remember, start getting honest with yourself. Ask yourself, why don't I like this subject? Maybe you just have a really bad teacher. Like for me in A-level chemistry the first year, I had a horrible teacher who just was not on it. She hardly understood the content. If she doesn't get it, how am I meant to get it? Like it's just very unmotivating. Especially at A-level, you just need a lot of support. Maybe the subject is just really challenging. In my first year of uni, I had coding classes in Python and I had never coded before in my life. I had a class called Formal Logic and I found it so challenging because I just was not used to algorithmic things Maybe you hate the subject because you can't see any applicability to your real life. You just feel like it's a useless subject. Like, oh, algebra, am I really ever gonna need that? Like, when am I ever gonna actually find X in real life? Like, you're not. Maybe you're studying French and you're just convinced that you're never gonna meet a French person, you're never gonna go to France, so like, why am I even trying? Whatever your reasons are, just get honest and put it in this spreadsheet. How can you make it better if you don't even know why you don't like it? Okay, so we've identified our problem areas. We know why we don't like them. We know why they're a problem. Step three, come up with a plan. Add a new little column to your spreadsheet. It is so tempting when you don't like a subject to spend less time on it. If you don't enjoy it, it is literally the last thing that you wanna do to like go over and spend more time on stuff which is really challenging. Like how do you motivate yourself when you literally just don't enjoy it? But that's what you need to do. For each topic, start coming up with some action items. So for me with A-level chemistry in year 13, I knew that my teacher wasn't very good. So I located another teacher in the department and I set up a weekly meeting with her where I went over anything that I found really challenging. I went through past paper questions that I struggled with. And honestly, I didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy going for that extra meeting in my free time with a teacher but it was the little action, the little plan, which helped me eventually get my A-star in A-level chemistry. Some examples of action items for your plan is make it a routine to go over this every day for like 20 minutes. For example, if you hate algebra in maths, do five algebra questions every single day as soon as you get home from school. And then because it's a habit, it doesn't take as much effort. You're just getting used to doing it. You're not really thinking too much. And eventually the stress and hatred that you have for the subject will diminish because it will get easier the more effort you're putting in. Number four, get an accountability partner. Thing is, motivation is fleeting. You might leave this video and be like, yes, I'm actually gonna smash that subject. But in one week, when you hit a new question that you find really hard, when you attended a class that you found really boring, your motivation starts to disappear again. So one of the best things you can do is get an accountability partner who is gonna keep you accountable to the goals that you're setting for yourself. Maybe it's a friend who is just incredible at the subject and you can meet with them once a week to go through any questions that you need to go over. Maybe it's your teacher. Maybe you can just say, hey, like I am gonna give you a practice question that I've done every single week just to prove to you and to prove to myself that I'm still putting the time and energy into this subject. Put less pressure on yourself to motivate yourself by getting someone else involved. Number six, so important. Why did you start? 
why did you choose this subject? Why are you here? What are your goals? What are you trying to achieve in studying this? You can add a new column to your spreadsheet if you want to put this really tangibly for each topic or each subject that you're studying, but get really clear in what your motivation is for studying this subject. There are two main types of motivation. There's intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is you loving a part of the process. It is you finding true interest in some element of the subject. Say if you're studying biology, it's that you're genuinely fascinated by how the human body works or by how your own body works. And then extrinsic motivation is a source outside of yourself. So it's a grade that you want to get to get into the best university. It's that you really want to make your parents proud and that's motivating you to do well in this subject. What is your source of motivation? And write it down, journal about it, put it up somewhere, make a poster. Just really keep that in mind. Like, why are you here? Why are you trying? During A-levels, I was a big fan of like vision boarding and I'm putting motivational quotes on my wall and every single day going over to them and treating them as affirmations. Like I am capable of getting an A star in A-level chemistry. I want to study at a top university. I want to study X subject. I want to make my parents proud. I want to prove to myself that I am capable of achieving highly in something that I don't like. Like wow, what amazing discipline that I can prove to myself. Number seven, now that you know why you're motivated, I'm gonna ask you to do something challenging. I'm gonna ask you to take this subject that you hate and find five genuine reasons that you find it interesting. You see, even if you don't find geography interesting, there are so many reasons why other people adore this subject. And maybe if you knew those reasons, you could also find some beauty in it. For example, maybe you can't see why algebra is useful in your own life but you love looking outside at the weather and you love nature. Imagine if you can connect the fact that people predict the weather using complex mathematical algorithms and you can suddenly see like, oh my God, algebra, like that can be used for something that I do find interesting. Or like maybe you play a lot of video games and the art in it is amazing and you can see, oh my gosh, like wow, art and product design, like this is so essential for something that I actually love and something that I am connected to. Straight after this video ends, find those five reasons why this subject is incredible and is related to your life in some way. Next up on the same line, reframe the narrative in your mind. My friend, if you are waking up every day saying to yourself, I am going to fail English language, what are you expecting? You are literally telling yourself every day that there's no hope and that you're gonna fail. That's miserable, that is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know if you know about manifestation, law of attraction, all of that stuff. I don't know if you care about that stuff, but the thing is, what you tell yourself, you are helping come true. So stop saying you're gonna fail. Stop saying, I hate this subject. Stop going to class every time and being like, oh, I hate this, this is such a slog, I hate this, I hate this. Even if you find it hard, instead go to that class and be like, this is something I find difficult, but I'm gonna try my best. Oh my God, it's another day of geography. Oh, it's so exciting. I'm trying my best. Oh, I'm finding this really hard, but I'm capable of doing it. And that's a growth mindset, which is gonna serve you not only in school and university, but in your whole life, every time that you encounter a challenge. So practice it now. Also, everyone in your life is putting pressure on you to succeed. And I know that that's really scary. And sometimes it's kind of a cop-out option to say, oh, like, I always thought I was gonna fail. So if I do end up failing, it's fine. Like I predicted that, you know. But in doing that, you're only protecting your ego because it's a lot braver to say that you actually care and that you're actually trying. And that's brave because if you do fail, you can't just say, oh, I never tried anyway because you were trying the whole time. But I invite you to be brave, to say that you can do it and to give it your best shot because that's how you'll be proud of yourself regardless. My final point is, struggle harder. When it gets hard, you're growing. You're growing into who you are, the habits that you need to make you feel like your best self even when times are getting tough. You're teaching yourself perseverance and discipline and maybe no one's validating your struggle. So I'm here to say that I validate your struggle. Like even if you're putting in so much effort and you don't really see the results, I just wanna say that that is so cool and so brave and so amazing that you are trying so incredibly hard and keep doing it. Try new methods until something works. Go seek more help, like switch up your revision techniques. You can do this and yeah, just don't give up. 
And do, 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 final, final point, just like a side point. Even though I'm a big believer in finishing things and struggling, especially when times get tough in a subject, blah, 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 all this stuff. I also think that quitting has its place. If you realize you are doing something for the wrong reasons, then it is a brave thing to leave. For example, if you are studying something purely because someone else wants you to study that and you truly have no interest in it, then it is justifiable and brave to leave that thing. There's a fine balance between struggling harder and not giving up and knowing when it is the right decision for you. So if you do fall into that camp, then please just listen to and trust your gut feeling. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know other videos that you'd like me to make because this one was highly requested, which is why I'm doing it. My casual magic for the day is this blinding sun. It's like kind of unideal to film with, but it's just such a joy to actually have sun. Every time I'm squinting at the sun in the UK, I just can't help but be like, wow, thank you for this. <laughs> also, I love this top so much. It makes me feel like I'm in a Victorian era. Have a gorgeous rest of your day, guys. Bye.